This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by Omax Cryo Freeze. More on that later. Let's get into the do. You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here at Studio Jeans doing it at your mom's house. I'm Ryan Sickler. Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. Uh, head there, check out my tour dates, sign up for the email list. The Honeydewpodcast.com is the website for this show. That's where you go to find out the social media, the merch, all that stuff. And thank you again for all your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It means the world. Um, if you're new to the show, uh, what we do here is we highlight the low lights. These are the stories behind the storytellers. And today's storyteller, first time here on the Honeydew, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jeff Tate, everybody. Welcome to the Honeydew, Jeff. Hello. Thank How you. How do we sound? Oh, this is amazing. We're right there, aren't we? No, you nailed it. It's I love I love watching people get better at something. <laughs> that was my second take at that intro. That's I, I sounded I didn't mean it as a burn. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, but I did nail the second one. No, you did, and it wasn't even that the first one was. It wasn't even. It was the. It's the idea that uh, all of like starting with stand up. There's like it's like getting rid of something that's self conscious. It's like not feeling dumb doing something where you should feel dumb. Yes, and that was I like seeing that because it like it affirms to me that it's that easy. Like, yeah. cause it's, I have to still like, like I we're just in our own it. way. I hate, yeah, I'm the same way about that. And then when, and then to see you do it so effortlessly, it, it was like, yes, you can get like to myself. I could, I, when I said, it's nice to see someone get better at something. I meant me. <laughs> 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 I meant, I realized I had just gotten better at something by watching you, by watching how you did it. I appreciate that. I yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was, it was meant to be that level compliment. I, and then when everybody was like, whoa, I was like, oh, what what I say? Um, well, I'm, I'm excited to get into this with you today. Uh, but before we do, will you please plug, promote everything you'd like? All right. Well, I uh, am on Instagram at Jeff Tate. It's spelled with a G-E-O-F-F-T-A-T-E. -F -F That's it. And uh, I got some shows coming up in December. December 19th at the Highlands Ballroom in Atlanta. December 21st at the Lazoom Room in Asheville, North Carolina. And December 22nd at the Central Collective in Knoxville, Tennessee. With uh, Those shows are with Trey Galleon. Uh, we'll be having some fun. <laughs> We're just going to go do those shows and then uh, we'll, we'll, whoever is listening that wants to will smoke weed with me and Trey. <laughs> That's what I want to say. It's a collective. So is it a it's a weed show or is it a weekend of shows? What is it? The co the the collective in um. You said Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is just a, a cool room that'll let us do it in there. They they uh, Trey knows the owners. They're real they're real nice people. We did it once last year. I was very very stoned. Trey's from Knoxville. I thought he was from Austin, but I actually thought he was from Philadelphia. By but turns out I was everything was wrong. It was Knoxville. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I've known him for like 14 years. <laughs> Just found out his name's not Trey. <laughs> All of this is true. This is uh, what's his name? I can't say his, his, oh, okay. his, his right. name is I Trey Gallion, I but I just thought his, but it's because he's the third. So it's whatever his dad's name is. <laughs> Oh man! All right, you got me crying. <laughs> we went to the uh, we went to uh, the prices right this morning. Yeah, like, I found the, out this show morning. Show the tag. Show the tag. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and Trey was Trey was with us. We had to give our uh, name tags to security. And uh, after like a minute or two, the guy comes over and goes, "Trey, do you have another name?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, it's probably under whatever." Like I didn't mm. even hear him. I was so stunned at that moment of finding out his name's not Trey. Like I haven't even really had a chance to talk to him about it yet. <laughs> that happened to me in my family. I, I had always had an uncle Al forever. It was an uncle John, and then wasn't until so when my my dad passed and my grandma passed and everybody kept this secret apparently. So I'm now living with my grandmother's sister, my aunt Marguerite, um, 19, probably 20 right there. And I say something, something, uncle John. And, and there she goes, 
it's not your uncle. I go, what? <laughs> 20 years, you know? And I'm like, wait, what? She's like, what do you say, Uncle John? I go, that's what dad taught us. She goes, that's because your dad was a good man. That is not your uncle. They never got married. He never this, never that. I said, they've been together for like fucking four. She's like, they're not married. They're just like roommates. And I was like, what? And so, then they sat you down and they were like, Ryan, it's like this. And then you got to watch all three seasons of Three's Company. <laughs> so then another, um, uh, well, he was, he was really, uh, we call him Uncle Al out of respect, but he was a cousin, an older cousin's husband. He was fantastic. I just loved him to death. And he recently passed, but only a few years ago. No, I know what it was. I go to an Oriole game one night and he's an usher taking tickets. I go, Uncle Al, what the hell are you doing here? You know, and he's like, oh, you know, he's retired or whatever. He's like, am I off time? I come here. I rip some tickets about six inning. I go in, I watch the game. I was like, hell yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, those, that's usually the best part of a baseball game too. Yeah. Gets real tight. That's the right. <laughs> And then he's got this name tag on. I don't remember what it said. It said something like Edwin or something. And someone comes over and calls him that. And I'm thinking he forgot his name tag protocol. <laughs> they probably have to wear a name tag. So he just took anybody's. I've done oh, that man. before back in the day. <laughs> and, and I was like, wait, what? So I text his, his daughter who I'm cl very close with. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, yeah, that's, I was like, what are you fucking talking about right now? His name's not uncle Al. I'm, I'm in my thirties. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about wait is not so he wasn't either he was neither one he was he neither was, your no, uncle he was, nor al correct uncle he out was of your respect because he cousin. was fantastic he was my cu a cousin's my dad's first cousin her husband so we called him uncle al and he was just fucking great he was great but his name wasn't even al it even should out. be like a catch-all name where it's like your family and we're not sure how exactly but you're all you're just like family al yeah family Al. i like family al <laughs> but was his name edwin I, whatever that name was i don't think i have it right he was that was his birth name yeah and that's what everybody else called him it was so, like a family name was al so and everyone a, else called him like joseph or whatever We're like what the fuck is going on have you thought about honestly have you thought about the fact that maybe you were edwin's secret family <laughs> 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 like he's got another wife and kids yeah. in, De in Wilmington, yeah, like Delaware. The, that runs deep, though, <laughs> yeah. runs deep. But he just accidentally got too close to the extendos on the fake side. <laughs> oh, that's how I saw him at the gate. Like, what is happening right he now? He had to make a real quick calculation. What do I do? Just play along. No matter what anybody calls me, Edwin, Al, whatever. Well, I mean, imagine be being 30 some years old and I'm walking into an Oreo game. The whole thing, I'm just looking back. I'm like, what the fuck is, I said, how many goddamn secrets are in this fucking family? This guy ain't my uncle. This guy ain't even Al. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> You're like, Uncle Al, and he's like, listen, I was just the kids club host. I would introduce the cartoons <laughs> at the school. I was on television, kid. I was never your real uncle. <laughs> So I want to talk to you about, we had talked a little bit before the show. We talked about your dad a little bit. I want to talk. I'd like to start with that if you're comfortable starting with yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable. Do that? Yeah. So he passed recently. Yeah, it was uh, last year, like last a year. little over a year ago, last March. So like a year and a half ago. And what was, were you guys close? No, it was, it was, uh, we were in proximity, but he never, there was no getting close. <laughs> It was, wasn't one of those. He was like an old, he was an old dad. He was old when he had you? How old was he when he had you? 38. Man, I was 41 when I had my daughter. Dial back on that old no, dad no, shit. No, 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 no. You're not talking about, you're talking about the wrong thing, man. You're talking about. Mentality. Yeah, because you're 40, you're 41, you're, fuck, you're fucking 54 or whatever is never the same as this guy's. Uh, yeah, I understand. Right, there are some people that are old forever and some people that get old quick and some people that never get old. That's and you can't, very well said. You can't, like. You should make a shirt on that. Something. Put that down. Mark the time code. That time shit. code that. 9-11. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. It really is. <laughs> It'll be oh, the easiest God. I'll one remember ever. it. I promise you I'll remember that time ago. <sighs> um anyway, so So all right, where are you originally from? 
I was born in Inglewood and then I moved a lot and then I lived in Cincinnati since I was 13. So, Inglewood out here. Inglewood out okay. here. Inglewood, California, where and, the forum is. And where is your dad from originally? Indiana, just 30 miles north of Terre Haute, Indiana. Okay, I know Terre Haute. Uh, it's, there's only two things, a prison and a Indiana State game, uh, or Larry Bird, <laughs> kind of Indiana State. What's te- I mean, Terre Haute sucks. Yeah, I, I know of it. And I, I've known people from there, yeah. Oof. Um, so what? talk to us about your relationship with your dad. Growing up as a kid, what it was like and, and leading up to well, He was a minister, okay. so it was terrible. <laughs> it was. Uh, Are you an only child? No, I got a brother. Okay. Um, was he the same way with both of you? He was, like, distant or, yeah, like, it's not like, they, it's not like he talked to him. Like none of us knew how to talk about anything. Them, yeah. He would, uh, I mean, if you want to say, uh, I mean, there were, t- uh, it's, I might seem a little biased, but it did seem like he favored one for the other. But it was just, I think it was just like an oldest kid mentality because he was an oldest kid. Okay. And you're not? You're the, you're no, the I am kid. also the oldest. Oh, and his dad, like his dad, it was very obvious to see where it, where it came from. Was his dad a minister as well? No, his his dad was just kind of a dick. Like a like he would he had so many kids and he would like pit them against each other and like that kind of like yeah. real manipulative and uh so it just created a bunch of like very fragile uh You just gonna let Timmy take your thermos like that? Yeah, that You're kind just of gonna stuff. let Timmy take your thermos like that. Oh uh, yeah, they would let just him fight kids. They would let him like uh Oh, they do that thing, that bullshit thing. We're like, we'll let this, we'll let you guys settle this yourselves. And yeah. like, well, that doesn't, that's not, that just means whoever's bigger is, the, is <laughs> yeah, right. And that's, that's not right. how that's any, right. that's yep. not how it works. That's why there's judges. Like you should have to do something. But they would, he would have them fight. Uh, so your dad's a minister. Yeah. And yeah. How, how does he meet your mom? At church. Okay. And uh, he got lucky because she was like a she was actually a Christian, <laughs> so, <laughs> actually right instead of like involved in some. <laughs> she got like they stayed together, but he was I mean he was always he was not a good person <laughs> or whatever. Are you minister. close to your mom? Were you close to your mom? No, we're like we're like. Uh, it's like just starting. Okay. Is she still alive though? Yeah, she's okay. still alive and got uh so he passed away and then she retired. Like right like her retirement was coming up and he like kicked it a couple months before that, which was like probably the nicest thing he's ever done <laughs> for her. Motherfucker was supposed to. He was on the hook for the retirement cake, god damn it. Somebody else is gonna have to get that retirement cake for my party. He's dead. <laughs> Just to not, like, just to let her have something to do for a few months before she didn't have anything to do. Like, not, because, man, if she had retired and he was still alive, uh, he would make this, like, it would he would have just. Drove her nuts. He's a nightmare. He was mean. Even <laughs> that, all the way up until he was dead? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so minister, meet your mom at church, they marry, have two kids. Is that all in Inglewood to start? No, or is no, that no. Terra They left to start? Indiana, right, or they left uh, Inglewood right away. My dad moved to Berkeley. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. He moved to Northern California. And I found like going back and thinking and asking, uh, like talking to my brother, like actually talking about some of this stuff, that I might, I have no idea my, if what, if any of it is true. Yeah, get on What of any of it is true. Like he told me, I thought 100% that he moved to California and he had not yet decided between going to umpire school or seminary school. There was a natural trajectory of him wanting to, his whole career was, uh, those were his two choices, umpire school. Right at that point it was, he moved there from Chicago where he was a teacher. Okay. So he, he had like, he just kept wanting larger groups of people. He could tell what to do. (laughs) So he was like me a teacher and a principal. Yeah, and he was you're like, right. Oh, I could if I was an umpire, Stadiums. I could tell baseball players what Everybody, to do. Everybody, what to do, where to go. 
But once he realized that uh, being a like being a minister meant that you were still kind of telling them what to do all the time, every moment of the day. Yeah. Uh, that's how he went that way. I mean, he would probably tell you it was for different reasons, but he wasn't much for self-examination. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys into sports and stuff growing up? And was he, did he show up to those games? Anything like that? Did he support anything you did or encourage he would you? Be, he would come to the games if he was the coach. What was he like as a coach? If he was like, of course he's the coach, right? He's got to control all the kids. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he can't. It turned out that it was just like it was like super narcissistic, uh, so that was also a way to like make it about him. Like, so everybody would know it's like he because it was only in the t- in like the towns where it was like, holy shit! It was only in the places where it was like small enough that Why'd they would you say know. Holy shit! Because I just it, something just, just occurred to me like yeah. where when he would be helpful and when he wouldn't, when he would. Cause if he wanted, if he did that, if he was the coach, then like there, like I couldn't. There was I was I liked baseball and I was pretty good at it until everybody learned how to throw curveballs. <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. I'm I, like, wait a second. Yeah, this is not good. Uh, but I didn't get to play the years that everybody learned how to throw curveballs because, uh, like he we we moved like right before the season started or whatever. We moved into the neighborhood after the teams had been. Oh, already picked. Yeah, so there was like it was always something like that. Like so, there was like two years in a row, and then the next time I could be on a team, I was like, oh man, those don't. It doesn't do what I thought it did. It doesn't look at all like it did the last time I played. Right. <laughs> the balls are fucking curving. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. We're allowed to do that. <laughs> I didn't think we were allowed to do that. And it turns out that I should have been hitting left-handed. I see my aiming eye for that sort of thing. Like if I shoot pool or play, I, I would say shoot a gun, but what I mean is buck, big buck hunter. <laughs> <laughs> the game, like one of yeah, those where you yeah, have to hold yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, I do that as if I was left-handed and it's an aiming eye thing where you do. And uh, I just knew when I pick up a bat and go left-handed when I was a little kid, he would yell at me like, you're right-handed. You gotta do right-handed. You'll mess it up if you do it the other way. You tell him to do it both ways. And now, uh, I mean, but my dad would be for sure. It was, he was like the last one to get it no matter what it was. So even that sort of like switch hitting, come on, that's some show offy bullshit. <laughs> yeah, show offy bullshit. <laughs> Just hit right handed like a normal person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's insane, but it would like, he was like, Oh, like the, like, any sort of like analytics or whatever would just, he was definitely like, Oh, you got to get, it's like you grind it out. Like that kind of all bad advice, that old timey yeah. bad advice. Yeah. Walk it off. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is a grind concussion. You should <laughs> yeah, go yeah, home. Yeah. No, no, you should wrap this shit up. Yeah, right you should now. go home yeah. for a week. <laughs> Nothing is worth this. <laughs> yeah. But that would be a bad, I mean, that should be the, that should be the slogan for the NFL, <laughs> the NFL. Nothing is worth this. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> going, so he's in the house all the time. You, you said they stayed together, so he's always he's there, but he's not there. He's not a good dad because he's there, or he does he leave? Well, it's like he would just he was just mad, just so angry like person. Yeah, no, no, like, uh, like the oh man, the things that got me in the most trouble were like if it was somehow visible. Like if somehow somebody knew that it was the pastor's kid was involved, oh my god! Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. What that's like? So if it made it, if it made it, uh, if it would make him look bad, um, oh man, it was a nightmare. Like if you got caught doing bullshit with four kids, it was always and the pastor's kid was there. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Or, uh, you know, if I was like running at the uh. Like where the potluck for the church lunch was. <laughs> yeah. You know, being a little too exuberant for a fucking baby. For a goddamn seven-year-old having a good time. <laughs> showing Running around the mac and cheese. Right? And like, <laughs> so I would skip because they didn't say, because I was following, I was more, I was always more of a letter of the law type. Like, 
Let's see how fast I can go without technically running. Boy, he doesn't like it when you start getting cute with the law either. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he doesn't want any of that <clears throat> fucking defense. <laughs> No going fast. It's really about the joy you're showing because maybe he was in a bad None mood. None of that. Right? I mean, I was just hungry because everything at a fucking potluck has onions in it. You don't like onion? No. It's so annoying. It ruin, <laughs> it's, it'll ruin my life. If I had three wishes, one of them would involve liking onions. Just because I'm broken. Like, I give up. Because I could make one of my wishes no, no more onions for anybody. But yeah, I'm not an I, asshole. Right. I like onions. So I right. That. I would rather I can make it that I like onions or that nobody, everybody else, or that they're just gone. What if I had it removed from your memory? <laughs> like you never knew about it. I wouldn't know about it. It wouldn't make a difference. Cool. Cool. That's the thing about people that say mm. to me, it makes me laugh. What if I removed it from your memory? If you did, then I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know any of that shit happened. So, yeah. I think I would still, like, if you, if I didn't remember I liked onions, I don't think that would change my opinion the next time I had some. So it wouldn't yeah, even you'd help. you like them, right? No, I'd probably oh, still, still hate them. like them, I see. But what if I didn't? Because I have a feeling that the fact that I don't like onions is why I don't like anything that's kind of crunchy like that. <laughs> Sneaking into my food, because my first thought is this is an onion. Somehow one got past the defense. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it back on track. My yeah, dad would not let me. That. My dad would not let me order from like if we went to McDonald's or something. I was not allowed to get mine without pickles or onions. You had to get it like I that. I had to get it like that, and I could just pick it off because right. he said it took it took too long. <laughs> it, Meanwhile, it, it takes longer because they're making mine right then. Fresh. So mine is the newest one. <laughs> yeah, the best one. You just willing to eat whatever's <laughs> at the top of the drawer. Like you're you're wrong <laughs> twice. You could have a better burger and and look benevolent in the same in the same way instead of being like, whatever, fuck you, kid. You're a real fucking pain in the ass back there. You pick it off. And then now I got it. Now I just have to push Dude. those terrible onions. No, now, man, I got no problem. No onions. I'll go back around. I go, uh, I pick the, it's, and this is completely psychological and I know it, but I pick the pickles off of every McDonald's anything. Only McDonald's. I'll eat Chick Fil A pickles. It's all, and then it's. I'm admitting to it's total bullshit. But there was a guy when I was a junior. He was a senior in our class, and his last day at McDonald's, he pissed in the pickle jar. Oh man! And then at the register, he would pick his nose, wipe it on that little digital thing, and then take orders until they were like, "Just get the fuck out of here." <laughs> and to this day, I will pick pickles off or order it with no pickles if it comes on. If it comes on and they're going off. Listen, can I tell you that? The fact that you're just like, you're like, I, I picked them off because you won't eat them because you heard a story where a guy pissed in the pickles, but you're, you're, you'll still eat that burger, the bun, like, and, and the you'll cheese. just throw those pickles away. <laughs> be like, these pickles might have been pissed on. Yeah. So I better not eat just the pickles. Yeah. You don't care that the stuff that was pissed on was on the rest of your sandwich. That cooks out. That cooks out. <laughs> it's mcdonald's bro it's well, nothing yeah, but grease man i think it's just like <laughs> everybody knows that anything that happens on the east coast is grosser than anything that happens anywhere else like when someone snaps on the east coast it's a nightmare it's there's just so many more people that when right the person in, in Ohio, so many people worked at McDonald's that no one ever had to piss while they were at work. The shifts were quite short. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was just working for 90 minutes. Nobody ever, they wouldn't even let you piss. All right. And so my Back dad wouldn't dad. let me order it with no pickles. And now he's dead. And I'm not. And I think we know who the real winner is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh all right as we're progressing through life here what kind of dad he's coaching so is this a minister sort of um 
you know, like this profile is I'm a, he's a minister. He coaches little league. He's, is that all just a, a, is it a show or is it just something he does over here and does Well, it's a show because everything's home? a show because he's, he, he was never, and I felt so, like, I felt so bad for him at the, by the, by the time I like did enough research on my own. When, once I started trying to figure out what was wrong with me and I, and it came to see like what begets the others, like, so I'm not this, like, he's different than his dad because he's like, but to see what, uh, to see where he was coming from and be able to look at a, what, what his dad and how he was treated to, to uh, understand the dysfunction. But yeah. And I felt yeah. if I it felt terrible that I just couldn't, uh, help him get over that and, and have any like self-worth on his own. He didn't have any on his own. He needed like attention. It's why I never, it's, it's why I was always against Trump. Cause he acted the most like my dad. <laughs> I was given a front row seat to why this would go exactly the way it's going. <laughs> For the last 40 years, I tried to tell everybody. I tried to tell everybody. I tell, he's just oh, like my dad. They, like, There's a book called The Narcissist Next Door that I read and was like the depressing thing about a narcissist to, a, out to me as a, as a comedian is that it, they're all so goddamn predictable. They're all exactly the same and they follow the exact same. And it, it, to the point where like, they'd be like, oh, here's some roundabout numbers, like a narcissist for the six, the first six months a narcissist joins the group. The group has, oh, as a whole, a jolt of energy. That person is very charming. That person wants the attention. So that person is very, very effusive and it, and it really like elevates morale. Uh, while also deflecting all criticism and taking all uh, of the credit, <laughs> but but they weren't nobody's really aware of what's going on. Then there's the second six months where they realize this guy just blames us for everything and takes <laughs> all the credit for himself. And then there's the next six months where they try to get rid of the person, and so that so they say like a narcissist is on average like they might not get fired they might not know what to do but they like they they'll see the uh they'll see the progress that's made at the beginning and they'll start like like whatever environment whatever corporate structure you're in you'll move but it tends to be you'll be at the same position then for about 15 months on average and we moved every 15 months you really did yeah wow <laughs> Like it's to, like, it's to like the that. fucking day they got it right. It was like my dad read this book and was like, oh, I'll just be like this. <laughs> wow. Let's take a quick break to tell you about our sponsor, Omax Cryo Freeze. So whether you're an athlete, a weekend warrior, or someone who deals with constant joint pain like myself, back pain like myself, or muscle soreness or arthritis, finding a natural remedy that instantly works might seem non-existent. Most over-the-counter pain relievers, such as Icy Hot and Ben Gay, only focus on one basic cooling effect, such as menthol, which temporarily takes your mind off the pain until that pain returns in an hour or so. If you're looking to get rid of nagging muscle and joint pain immediately while providing long-lasting recovery, then you need to try the natural breakthrough pain relief solution, Cryo Freeze CBD, developed by Omax Health. This non-prescription triple-action pain roll-on is specifically formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. The best part is this is 100% natural. CBD-powered remedy works its magic within 10 minutes of application, and relief lasts up to eight hours, which is way longer than the over-counter products. It's super easy to throw in your gym bag and take on the go for emergency pain relief. You simply roll it on over where it hurts and ice out the pain with an Arctic Blast. Uh, Omax Health is offering my listeners 20% off a full bottle of CryoFreeze pain relief roll-on plus free shipping. This discount also applies towards any product site-wide. So just go to omaxhealth.com today, enter code HONEYDEW, and take advantage of this incredible saving. That is omaxhealth.com and enter code HONEYDEW to get 20% off CryoFreeze 
and site-wide, all right? It's CryoFreeze an advanced pain relief product line that was inspired by cryotherapy, which means cold therapy, and the treatment exposes the body to cold temperatures in order to numb and reduce pain or inflammation. Your favorite NFL and NBA athletes are using this, like Steph Curry, LeBron James. They all use this on a regular basis. So if you're looking to relieve your muscle and joint pain within 15 minutes and you need a natural yet powerful solution that is tested and works, Try CryoFreeze Pain Relief Roll-On. This quick-absorbing, scientifically-backed formula provides pain relief instantly. And if pro athletes use it, well, it must work. So remember, go to omaxhealth.com today and enter code HONEYDEW to take advantage of this incredible savings. That is omaxhealth.com. Enter code HONEYDEW. You will get 20% off CryoFreeze and site-wide. That's omaxhealth.com and enter code HONEYDEW to get 20% off cryo-freeze and 20% off site-wide. Go to omaxhealth.com and feel relief faster. Now let's get back to the do. So you Ingle, you leave Inglewood and you go where again first? Uh, who knows, man? I'll, I can tell you, the here's the names of the places I that I know, know yeah. I lived, yeah. but I don't remember. Um, Camarillo, Hawthorne, Campbell... Granada Hills and Inglewood. Okay. All over out here. And I, yeah. And one of them is, I think Campbell is up near San Jose. Uh, my parents met in Berkeley round about 72. I'm going to say that there is, this is uh, one of the crazier things I'll say. <laughs> There's a non zero chance. <laughs> my dad, uh, is the Zodiac killer. <laughs> <laughs> like if you believe in profiling, he fits the profile to a T. Even to the point where after the Zodiac killing stopped was like right when uh, he met my mom in Berkeley. My dad's really keen on telling people what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you got to look into it. Then, dude. Every like the, all the Zodiac killer victims were people who were could be perceived as misbehaving, like out partying or the first two were like, I guess was a couple on the beach having sex, fucking making out dancing or whatever. You, well, it's what you said. Enjoyment, whatever yeah, yeah. enjoyment you so were they're having, doing you something to kill it literally. Yeah. But he would, but, uh, and it was all in the Bay area and there's no, like, I can't figure out where he lived then. No one knows for sure. Your mom, <laughs> My mom says that, oh, he's like, oh, he moved here in 72. Like, oh, so he moved here. And then you guys met immediately. And he was going to the seminary. And I believe all of that, except that he, I mean, it's not like he told the truth about everything. So uh, some of it's skeptical. And I don't know, um, like, just trying to piece together what got mentioned, right? It's like you watch a real long movie and then you're like, well, what the fuck was this about? So I start remembering, like, oh, you said you were a bailiff. Well, when were you a bailiff? Your you dad said, was yeah. at one point? He was in the army. Uh, but I don't know. I can't find was when. Zodiac killer in the army? No, no. I mean, but he he was good at not being detected. <laughs> I don't know if that has anything to do with the army. <laughs> <but> <laughs> he was like, uh, he might have been in army intelligence. He said that. But that's also what a fucking crazy person will say. Too. Will say. Yeah, like, yeah. He was probably, he probably just cut potatoes and was like, oh man, I, I would put codes in them. <laughs> and then just, you know, if they figured him out, I'm a spy. <laughs> anyway, and what I mean is, uh, I don't know where, like I've done. Prior I, to 72. Like just trying to piece it together, all the things he told me that he did and when he did it, like suddenly thinking about them all, it was. Do you think he really stopped killing in 72 and never killed again? Or do you think he killed again and just no one knows about that yet? I know you've thought of this. No, I mean, what I would like to think is, no. I don't think that, I don't think if he did that he didn't, I think that he found it because it could be like, oh, well, I could just tell this lady what to do forever. <laughs> Why am I killing them all? Yeah, why am I killing people who are having a good time? I could just make sure. People never do that again. Yeah, I married this lady. Like, what's. I can't fix everything in the world, but oh God damn it, I'll make sure God. this lady never listens to Credence Clearwater <laughs> Revival again. 
and only listens to goddamn talk radio forever. Is that what it was like? He was always doing Man, that. Man, I was like 20, like 19, 20, and they were showing those, uh, those like VH1 had uh, live at the Hard Rock Cafe, mm-hmm. and John Fogarty played a played a show. John Fogarty had a solo album out that year. It was real. It was being pushed real hard until it came out, and MTV realized, oh, we can't use any of this. <laughs> this is for old people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he was on it. They played the, he played the show. And then my mom walked into the room or by the room or whatever. And like, and knew the song and it blew my mind. And I had no idea. And she was like, Oh yeah, it's, it's that, uh, what's that called? Credence. And I was like, what How the fuck do you know? Credence? <laughs> I never thought anybody. I thought li- you only knew Paul Harvey. Right. I thought you're all's favorites. Like, uh, Limbaugh, man, they listened to Rush Limbaugh oh, from heavy. back when he was only on in like Sacramento. My, I mean, the, to be like a hipster Limbaugh fan, like I remember when he was local. <laughs> like that's real <laughs> trash. <laughs> there was a point when he was. I mean, yeah, but to imagine being my dad and hearing that in the seventies and being like, "Fuck yeah, I'm with this guy," <laughs> and then ride or die with Rush Limbaugh for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a, that's that's a drag. That's you know what I'm doing. That's you know different. what? Uh, my yeah. brother and myself <laughs> and my ma are going to see Elton John next month. That's nice. Yeah, like there's like whatever she wants. Like now, where is like, she? she? Where does she live? Cincinnati. So you said your relationship with her is just beginning. Yeah, it's like so you have an opportunity to find out more about your dad then maybe more than you know about pre 72 is what I'm saying. If you ask the right questions and maybe she has those answers. Well, no, we've talked about that and she doesn't know anything. All she said was like the he whole told her that he moved there in 72. <laughs> Listen though. How old no, was I know, but I'd... he, he told me that's not what he told me. <laughs> I would say, what the fuck did you do for 22 years before you moved here? You know? Yeah, he or was whatever. 30, he was thirty-two, even older. But that's it's nineteen seventy-two. You don't know. There's not. There's no such thing as the internet. My mom's not going to fly back to <laughs> no, Evanston, Illinois, and go through. Who doesn't give up thirty-two years of their past? But <clears throat> that's what weird. I'm saying. What I'm saying is that his, the, the he did he did tell her what he did up until then. But what he told me he did up oh, until then didn't match up. I see. What he okay. told my brother didn't match up. Oh, like, he told you all different shit. But it's like. It's Everybody like, got the <laughs> But it could just be it could just be things are backwards or whatever. But we just what I'm saying is I'm not saying there's a good chance. I'm saying that there is a non zero chance. <laughs> I, what I can tell you is that if they're still looking for the Zodiac killer, they're looking for someone who's a lot like my dad. I got it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> if they, if you think you found somebody, bring me in. Let me question him. I can tell you whether or not he's you a lot like my dad. <laughs> I'll just just show. If you're wondering, show him an article from say oh National Geographic God. or Scientific American that claims climate change is real, and watch him tell you that it isn't and that that's not a real source, and then you'll know that guy's just like Jeff's dad. <laughs> So right there, you probably got him. That's a Zodiac killer. That's how you got to turn uh, the tide is, on climate change. If you're is. against climate change, you fit the profile of the Zodiac killer. <laughs> Do you want to take the risk you're not properly alibied? Come on. Just be for climate change. And then we'll know you're not the Zodiac killer. <laughs> that's all climate that's change. All you're either for it or you're possibly climate the Zodiac killer. Really, it, it ain't this guy. It ain't this guy. <laughs> He drives a Prius. Next. (laughs) Right. And then his mustache regrows as he gets in his Prius. (laughs) He just pours gas out the window. I still waste it. (laughs) I still waste it. (laughs) So it like, I'm fascinated by this because I read this story about a guy who decided his dad was like in the LAPD. And his, one of his dad's hobby cases after he retired was the Black Dahlia murder. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he like did all this uh, research, and he was always kind of following the Black Dahlia murder all through his career, too. So this kid grew up with his dad being like kind of obsessed from a distance of that murder. His dad was one of the beat cops when they found the bodies who had to like stake out the uh, neighborhood. Area, yeah. 
So he thought that's why he was following it. So he just kept researching it after he retired and then figured out that the, 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 his dad probably was the Black Dahlia killer. <laughs> that's the ultimate conclusion he came to. <laughs> <laughs> and then I read that and then I thought, well, that's crazy. Imagine being that guy and you're just like, oh, my dad's like really into this. And then I thought like, would that like how could that even happen like what could my dad possibly like what if my dad's is like i said it in my head as a joke like this is like if your dad was a zodiac killer and then i thought about it and was like i and i kept think i kept coming up with reasons why he wasn't and then none of those held <laughs> like oh he wasn't in san francisco because he was uh in san francisco in illinois or still in <laughs> and you're like oh now i don't know <laughs> was he back in because i thought he was in san francisco area all of like it all kind of and then just generally he knows that he like maybe the first time he killed somebody the people on the beach he was just like hey don't fuck that's too much fun to have and still get to heaven and they were like fuck you old man and he was like but i'm 24 or whatever and he was like no but inside you're really old he's like oh, i get it and then he murdered him because he was mad because he for sure didn't like to be questioned when he made a statement, that, them, them's rules were the rules. That's it. No fucking on this part of the beach. <laughs> or Don't I'll break those rules, you. right? Because we have talked about it. Because I did ask her, and uh, I go, I go, do you think? I go, I got this idea. I was on the phone, and I go, will you ask Dad where he lived in 1969? And she goes, why do you want to know? And I go. Because I got this idea that he might be the Zodiac killer, and I want to see if maybe he was still, if he was still in Chicago or whatever when they started, then I He's could I could put hook. that to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how most people would be like, "You're crazy. I'm not going to do that." My mom was like, "Hold on. <laughs> I got an old journal. Hold on a second. Yeah, she just goes, "Hang on," and then goes and asks him, uh, "Where did you live in 1969?" And this was like, uh, "He's like Chateau." He didn't, no. he didn't, uh, he didn't I mean, answer. he did it. He was like, he could narrow it down, but this was like after he for sure had, <laughs> I didn't uncheck, unlike diagnosed, but looking back, probably dementia. Alzheimer's, dementia, okay. something like that. But he didn't, uh, this was one of the earlier clues too, was she was like, well, he doesn't, he's like Chicago or San Francisco. And I was like, oh damn, that's those so close to <laughs> getting him off the hook. <laughs> I'm trying to alibi him for something. Is there any way? Does he have any receipts? Does anybody re receipts. I'm sure he made a scene somewhere. Does anybody remember? Did someone try to play the Beatles at his favorite ribs restaurant and <laughs> five years after they were on Ed Sullivan? Like that he's the kind of person that would still be mad about the Beatles. Right now. Right well, no, by sixty nine. <laughs> by okay, okay, by, yeah. by two when by everyone loved him. he had forgotten about the Beatles. <laughs> I can't even think like, I wonder how long, I bet it had probably uh, been 15 years since he even was like, ah, oh, the Beatles is a band. Like that much of a thought, like any idea, like it wouldn't even, they don't advertise the Beatles on Tim Allen sitcoms and no. <laughs> Sean Hannity. He knows how to turn his cash into gold and he knows how to reverse mortgage his rent, rented condo. So he gets dementia, Alzheimer's, that's what, that's what got him ultimately ultimately it was his um body just like shut down how old 78 like just like natural causes did it's, you go say goodbye yeah yeah no i would like moved back to help my mom take care of him he, oh, he was nice. in uh there was like a year maybe maybe less than a year somewhere around there where he was uh i was like making sure he could just get to the doctor and stuff and mm -hmm. then she decided to go to work. Then he went into this like rehab facility for a while and didn't do. And then I had to go there every day. I was basically, I would have to go there and meet his uh, rehabilitation, his, ther his therapist, physical therapist, and do the rehab with him. He wouldn't do it uh, if somebody wasn't there to make him. It I was think so that's great. I know, but it's still but in like, all those car rides and all that sitting with him there, you never started asking any of the questions you really wanted to ask. Did you ever? Take, no, no, man. He was a dick the I, whole time. I, I was, saw, but only he didn't, that's there. He yeah. didn't change it all, at even through all, that. Man. Nothing that didn't soften him either. That he knew he was checking out. No, wow. no, no, no. He was still. 
We've joked about this. Like, My mom and I no. have joked about this. There are <laughs> two types of people in this world. Here we go. The person who uh, is grateful anyone is willing to clean shit off their balls. Yeah. <laughs> or the person who will complain about how it's being done. <laughs> and he was the second. <laughs> The cleaning shit off his balls is a given. He's entitled to that. <laughs> he was such a... He was like, All the way to the end. All the way to the end. Damn. He never thought about uh, really anybody else. Like he knew... And I don't even think... But it wasn't until a few years ago that I stopped uh, thinking it was just because he's a dick. Like I, I, once I started reading the books and I saw the way he was and then the way that his dad was with him and with all the with all the brothers, like... Man, it's it's... I get it, yeah. but you can you can learn from it or be just like it. I mean, that's right. why I have like as much as I don't like I, you probably, I don't know if you get political on the show, but as much as I don't like Donald Trump, I have less respect for his kids. Why do you say that? You can't tell your dad to fuck off oh, when it I turns out he's saying. a fucking asshole. Yeah, like I you can't. So you like because there's no amount like they've been doing this forever. And I have way more respect for people who have been like, fuck off. I guess it's be, you know, if I knew that I wasn't being left any sort of legacy, I'm getting, I got, I got nothing from my dad. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you, it's a lot easier to tell him to get fucked when you realize he's kind of dumb. When in all those times, the, any of those moments, there wasn't a two minute conversation where he ever softened up and just said, I love you or reminisced about anything that he liked or anything. Nothing. No, he would like, he said, he together, said, he said, I love you all the time, but it had, it meant the same thing. It always did. It meant, uh, it was regardless. It was, it was words, man. His actions made it clear that it's contingent. Yeah, I get that. It's contingent upon like, I love you because I'm in a good mood right now. Right. And it's like, well, I mean, that doesn't count. <laughs> like once you like, it was okay. Like we, like I mourned our relationship years before he died. So it wasn't, uh, it was, it was like, there's something ironic about the, like our relationship got better as soon as he couldn't, like, as soon as he stopped being able to think like he didn't want to, uh, we just like, it, it was easier to just watch TV or whatever family feud. <laughs> right. Cause then it was like, it was his, it was, it was more predictable. What he, what he needed was more predictable became simpler so it was easier to keep him in a good mood so you told me that you were drinking at what age did you start drinking probably oh 18 18 okay maybe i think i think uh i had my first boozy drinks the night i graduated high school and what were you drinking those were bartles and james yeah that's what yeah, i started yeah. on those wine coolers i know yeah. no, that, exactly, that'll get you that's exactly right <laughs> I mean, in retrospect, those wine coolers and the can that camel, that Joe the Joe Camel mm -hmm. thing, they're probably right about that. It's just made for kids. It is made for kids. <laughs> There's no doubt that shit was so fruity, and you were like, "This is sparkling water. It tastes like flavored sparkling fucking water." That shit. It tastes it like it you. tastes wine like a um, poorly mixed uh, icy, yeah. like with too much of the red <laughs> stuff and not enough of the rest of it. <laughs> So you get, you're fucking zooming. Oh, so man. did your drinking, did it, did it get worse? What happened? No, it turns out I just never knew how to have any emotion. So drinking was like a way to, that was your escape. I think it was a way to let them out instead of still like you could get rid of them and have some, but like, I, like I didn't have any control over it. Like I would just get drunk. And it became, oh, I, but how often? Like nightly, weekly? What? Oh yeah, all the time. Like as really? soon as I do anything, I do it all the time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's my problem. That's hilarious. That's why I got. I had to get rid of everything except weed. <clears throat> okay. And I know that it's. I know, but like I still have right, like. Like there's like so many stops before your before your life is actually ruined, right? I still have like get a regular job as a stop. Yeah. 
and I don't I don't even have to do that yet, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did that make sense? <laughs> it totally makes sense. It makes sense. You're doing great. Well, I've never sent a text message I wish I could get back stoned. I yeah, agreed. Yeah. You're right. I've never ruined. I might have not started relationships because I'm stoned, but I haven't ruined any because of it. Yeah. <laughs> there might there might be a few never wases, but whatever. So... You you drinking got to a point where what you how many years how what you started doing this did you go I to st- rehab I stopped, or anything? no no but Never. I stopped drinking because it's the same the same mentality like I can I can the itch I was scratching wasn't it didn't need to it didn't need to be alcohol it need just needed okay. to be something got it so it's like it's very easy for me to not have the first drink okay it was always. And it was it wasn't even that I would get like hammered every time, but I just hated it when I I got to I just hated it when I did. It was never it was never good. It just made time go by. Yeah. <laughs> different. And there's way better ways to make there time go way by better different. Way. You're right. So I stopped doing it. So I just stopped. It, How? How did you stop? You just said fuck it and you stopped when cold turkey like that? Or did you try and stop a few times? No, I just did uh I just made like I didn't really have a chance to what do you mean? like I was on I was on the road and I was driving a lot. And so I made it like right then like oh I'm going to stop smoking now but or stop drinking now because I just okay. can't be driving a rental car in fucking Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> yeah. I can't be responsible. Like what if like I can for sure just have 3 beers that uh, night, but I could also think I could for sure have three and end up having nine. And this is the beginning of the tour. Come on. So I would just be like, all right, I'll get stoned once I get to the hotel because that's easier to do. You just have to do one thing once. (laughs) You don't have to do a one thing a bunch of times. Show's over. I'm going to stand out here for five minutes. I'm good to go. Yeah. Yeah. And back then I just got, I just gotten started getting those pens. So they still worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't really work anymore. They don't, nothing happens. I don't trust the pens, any of them. I'm no, glad that I'm out too. Like to find out that those bootleg THC ones yeah. were other problem. Easy. No. I knew smoking weed was better. The plant. <laughs> always stick with the plant. It's the one thing that works. That is it, man. That is it. Um, have you ever gone to therapy? Yeah. For for what for everything? Yeah, or for what, everything. What, I what went made you for... say I'm going? I saw myself doing it exactly. Well, I got divorced in 2010, like towards the end of 2010. Oh, okay. How old were you when you got married? 28. And how long? And now it married? sounds like when I say 28 after I said 2010, it sounds like I don't know how numbers work. <laughs> oh, shit. So I was 28 in 2006. 2006. And, and we got married. That was 32 in 2010. And we got divorced. Okay. And, and why? I just. Why did you get divorced? We're jumping around a little bit. Well, trying. emotionally, uh, we were not um, fulfilled. Like, I didn't know that. I, it just wasn't working. And we didn't. I didn't know what to, what to do different. Like, I didn't know that I wasn't emotionally available. I didn't. I had one marriage to know about and use as an example. And what I tried to do was be better than that. And I was fucking way better than that. (laughs) Uh, But it still doesn't mean that it's good, right? Better, just because it's better doesn't mean it's good. That's right. Right? I have a whole fucking 10 minutes about dominoes that explains just that. Yes, it is better. (laughs) How about you try to make it good? Yeah, thank you. I just somebody just ordered Domino's and I was like, this is the, this is shit. I don't think it's shit. I kind of like. I still like. <laughs> it is better. It is better. <laughs> but yeah, how do you like it if it's not good? It's better. It's well, just, the one I had was shit. Well, how the about bit that? my bit is always about uh, the it's like the actual. It's not about the pizza at all. It's about why are you you decided to say you're gonna make it better, and you could. 
have also decided to say you're going to make made it, good. it great. Yeah, yeah you right. could say great. Yeah, you could. Nobody's making you. I didn't say this is better. Yeah, right. Mm, yeah. You know what? This is better. <laughs> You don't have to <laughs> strive for fucking excellence. You all just strive to like the next step. I'm assuming that whoever is the, whoever's writing this, there's not even a Domino's pizza in the same room. <laughs> it's just a guy thinking about Domino's. And then he writes out, you know what? I'm just going to go with better. <laughs> no promises. Yeah. <laughs> So that low that made, pressure situation. So that right has there. nothing to do with how I feel about the pizza. Uh, <laughs> except that you do agree it is better. It is better. It is better. I mean, if he had said this pizza is good now, I wouldn't. Tr I wouldn't sue him for false advertising. I would ask him about his, how much pizza he knows about. I'd be like, Have you ever had? Like, I would do a couple right, of those. Yeah. You ever have? What about this? Like, and he's like, Oh, I've just had Pizza Hut. And then pizza I found. <laughs> pizza like, oh, I found. Damn. No wonder you think Domino's is the best. <laughs> I wrestled a rat for the one piece of pizza. It's better than that. <laughs> Remember pizza rat? Mm -hmm. Right? Don't bite my finger. All right. So we get a divorce. And we decide now we're going to stop drinking and go to therapy. Is that no, right? No, no. Different. No. Uh, that was the first time I just got... Uh, drunk for a while and just kind of like leaned into it because it and part of it sometimes it felt like because I had the excuse I was going to use it and that's like hindsight I never really like once I thought that at the time that was when I kind of was like I should probably slow this down and then uh, after my last after then I had another like long relationship that did not did not end uh, well uh after I, your marriage. After my marriage. Okay. And I got, I started like really not having any control over my drinking again, just getting drunk a lot. And what were you like drunk? Uh, I was fine until. Uh, were you were you a talkative drunk, a fun drunk, an angry drunk? What were you drunk? I mean, uh, you sure? yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any of those were possible, and it was like... I guess they all a, always are. Right, it's roulette, they? man. We have no idea. Right, you pull the string, and you don't know which noise for sure is going to happen. But, but it's going to be gone. one of these yeah. one of these six things, like in Toy Story, when you put there's a <laughs> yeah, snake in my yeah. boot. Uh, yeah, Sometimes there was one. a snake in my boot. Yeah. And I was going to be real real fucking agitated all night. And it was all like I was doing a lot of things. I, I learned a lot going to therapy that I try to do like regularly like decide like just deciding like it seems too easy but I just just like a lot of times I have to just tell myself no this is going to be fun and then it is fun just because it's I don't really like crowds but I used to let not liking crowds make decisions for me <laughs> and now I just use it sparingly like what's worth it what is this worth it like this is worth it like if this is going to be dope or if this is going to be what but also like i can just leave like now knowing that you have so much like with uber and stuff it's so much e everything is so much easier like, oh it is yeah so i don't you that feeling like trapped or whatever like any of that like anxiety type stuff is like alleviated now that i just know my exits like you know how like you plan your like james bond will plan his exits mm -hmm. whatever jason Bourne, i mean or whatever whichever one you like uh he'll plan his exits like i do that from home before i get to a place or go somewhere i'll be like all right here's a couple ways like if it gets too much here's a here's a couple ways you can a couple ways to get out okay right and then it just makes it easier to to just know going in like i have a plan I have a plan. Like I gotta go. I do have to do this, or like I, I can. If you say it like this, like be ready. Well, yeah. I'm glad you went to therapy. I would. I mean, if I had to guess, a guy with a background like yours, you probably. I would think you wouldn't want to go to therapy, or even think that was an option. But maybe you hit a point where you're like, "Fuck, I just need to talk to somebody." We don't ever. Talk. You said earlier in the episode, like we didn't talk about any of this shit. Yeah, I hit that point. So there was what, a part of me that was worried that if I went to therapy, it would I would uh, get I would get better and then less funny. Isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah. you do I, worry about dumb. losing your edge. It is dumb. 
and I had to reach a point where I didn't care where like, I like yeah, when I started seeing you, a therapist, yeah. I decided that I was going to do it. Even if that was true, <laughs> like, I guess I'm just might not be funny anymore, <laughs> but that's all that's turns out. That's insane. <laughs> There's like a tortured artist <laughs> thing that keeps you stuck in your, and this idea of like, well, I decided to be a comedian. So all of these things kind of go along with that, but there's no rules to any of this. So I don't no. have to do, you don't have to do anything you don't like. I saw a career counselor at the same time. Cause I figured if I wasn't going to be funny anymore, I better figure out how to get a fucking job. You were that worried about it, huh? Well, I thought here's how it really started, man. Have you ever seen that TV show called friends? Everyone has seen it. Yeah, it's I very popular about it. So Chandler, you mean friends on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah. Friends on Netflix. It says, <laughs> I think it's, it's about some kind of weird alternate universe oh, where God. everybody was worried about other people thinking they were gay. God, that could be what that show's about. <laughs> and enough of it is about that. That people were like, damn, is that really what this show's about? <laughs> if you cut all those seeds together. Yeah, man. I mean, come on. They oh Chandler I saw this thing where Chandler like hated his job and went to see a career counselor and that's where I heard about career counseling. So and, you heard about career counseling on Friends and you well I wanted one to out. see I felt like when I saw that uh, I was probably you know I was in a hotel room somewhere yeah uh, doing some gig where I wanted to I would be like oh, I wish I was dead but not because of the gig <laughs> just in general in general that's how I was feeling. <laughs> And a career and I saw that and was like, oh, you. so that so and then Chandler's on TV and he's like, oh man, I'd rather be dead or whatever. I'd be like, what is this one about me? And then he's like, oh, I went to find a career counselor to see what other job I'm suited for. And then the whole punchline of the show, it's the same job that he had. And the fact that it wasn't stand-up comedian. Because his background is like his parents got divorced when he was young. His dad became a, a transgender a woman who leads a cabaret in Vegas. Like his mom's a romantic. Like if you like, it would seem like, and the way he acts around everybody, if a career counselor is ever going to tell someone to be a comedian, it would have been him. <laughs> That's your call. huh? Yeah. And I thought, <laughs> well, I guess, it, I guess it's because it's not really a job. Like you just shouldn't do it. So I was like, maybe I'll go to a career counselor and be like, I'm a comedian. What kind of, cause the career counselor, the main thing is it's worth it for like an app, just one yeah, session. Well, tell me what you do. You get there and what happens? I have never been to mine one. Mine was a, uh, mine was a little bit more like I saw her eight, eight times, maybe six, but like, cause I had no idea what, what, it, what it even was. But what, if you want to go in and do it just once, it, it, she'll help you. She, this, she helped me. She took being a comedian for 14 years or whatever at the time, how to put that on a resume so it sounded like I could do whatever job I was asking for. Like all this stuff where it's like, oh, I don't do anything. Like, I don't know what, like, do I have any skills? What are the skills I have? And she's like, no, you're really good at this. Like you could, you could be someone's travel agent. And I was like, oh yeah, I could. And I was like, <laughs> She was like, yeah, because you're your own travel agent. You know how to do it. I was like, I do know how to do that. And so they, she starts making these lists of like, these are these jobs you can have. What like, was the, what, was there anything that you were like, ah, if you had to settle, what do you think it would have been? I started go. I started looking at copywriting jobs. Okay. Because you're writing little yeah. jokes about, because it, it's the kind of thing where the amount of funny you have to be about a tractor. Oh man, it's so easy to be that, that level <laughs> yeah. of funny. They don't, it just has to have the appearance of, it has to Humor. be a breezy yeah, sentence. Right, that's like right. that's breezy is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so I went out and was like, and she was like, well, here's what you do. Go find somebody, just listen. Like I bet you, cause I would see her every other week. All right, wait, hold on. What's the weirdest one that you, um, that you've uh, qualified for or that? Oh that no, we didn't. Fit? It was really not. No, nothing none of those real specific things. Like it was like we wrote down, there was like, well, and that's, and that's it. We kind of skipped a few steps. Then like they took, you write down everything about your job that you like mm -hmm. and everything about your job that you hate. And then you make, and you put both I of those see. things in okay. piles. And then when you start thinking of jobs and you start looking at what's out there and you just see like, how many of these things can I do? And then how many of these things can I avoid? Okay. 
and you try, try to find a job that has more of these and less of more good, less bad. And then one day it, it like clicked uh, like, but this, all right. So she, I'm extending my network. She told me about copywriting advertising. And that one seemed immediately like kismet because that's what uh, Chandler ends up doing. <laughs> like 10 years later or whatever, I'm friends. <laughs> and I was like, damn, it just like, it felt circular. And I was like, I think I know some people that do this. And there was a few other ones, but I really went into this because I like, I would go out to these offices and meet these people. And it was really, it seemed, it seemed depressing but in a hand, in a way where but not it seemed like people some people are com complain about it some people dig it and, but it's it really seemed like it could be exactly what you want it to be mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody's gonna get mad like any time where you could just listen to your headphones that's uh and your job is to think stuff think about stuff come on you're really gonna complain about anything Probably, whatever uh so i, I would i like i I've went to someone's then i met that person's boss and then they just have like a meeting or talk to them or whatever and be like, this is what I'm trying to do. If you have, you know, and then sometimes, uh, the idea was that at some point there would be, you just build out a network in the same way that everybody that does comedy eventually knows everybody. Like there are people in, in your, in your circle and in your circle circle. And it's like, as you go out where you're like, I can't believe that like, we just literally, it's not that hard to know so many people. Like it tips to where you're like, I can't believe I've never met Dave Attell. Right. Yeah. Like, and that's where I'm at. Like when I think about it, like it's probably just Dave Attell. <laughs> I've never met him. Don't even know how, how is it? How has it happened? Uh, but the, everybody knows everybody in every business, every basketball writer knows each other somehow. <laughs> every, uh, so everybody in advertising in Cincinnati, they like all kind of knew each other. And Cincinnati has a pretty good advertising scene right now. <laughs> like independent, like new shingles, whatever, like, there are several cool like advertising firms in Cincinnati. So I met several people, uh, built, built that out. And then as I was like getting further in and there was like, okay, so if you do this and then I'm building out, making my own portfolio and then possibly bring, being brought in for like contract jobs or whatever, that, that kind of stuff is like how I was like shooting for that while I was still doing stand up. Like this is, we were developing this like plan for transitioning positions. And uh, then one day I was just looking at the list of things, the pros list and the cons list. And I realized I don't know why I even do any of the things on the cons list. I don't have to do any of them. I don't have a boss. Why is there any part of this job I don't like? Yeah. And once I realized that, I was like, I think I found out the best job. I'm going to do stand up, but just exactly how I feel like it. Right. Like, for and then if that doesn't work, then we'll then we'll talk about this advertising thing. <laughs> so you always got copywriting to fall back on. Yeah, well, I, at least I have a plan. Yeah, and that's a great job, and it's it keeps you in comedy too. It keeps you thinking. It keeps and you, you can writing. do it. You can do it whenever. Like I mean, I, yeah. I just needed to be. I feel like I needed to be shown. It was like Scrooged or whatever. I needed to be shown that uh, like you just do this for so long and you build up all of this baggage and this like. Cause you're like walking into a headwind mm -hmm. and every now and then it, I guess it had just been a while since I'd looked up and cleaned off my face. <laughs> so are you in, it's <laughs> <laughs> very descriptive, <laughs> oh, man. but you get the idea, right? Like I didn't realize yeah. that I was all covered in shit. I just, I got it. Yeah. I shook Do it you, off and um, now I realize. Since reconnecting a little more with your mom and your dad's passing, you find yourself enjoying stand up more, or less, the same? Is it? I just find different things are. I just, I just feel right now like something is happening <laughs> in how I do it and what I think about and how what I talk about. But I, and it's been going on. It's been going on for a little while, and I. It's because. I think it's because the stand up was I'd spent a lot of time doing stand up simply to figure out how to say things to my dad where he would have to listen to the whole idea before he could start shouting about it. And now that I don't have that, I don't I haven't written any ideas in a while. Okay. And that 
it doesn't concern me, but it makes me wonder, like, like I just, I just noticed. That's all is I noticed. And, uh, I wonder what, I wonder what that means. Probably nothing. Did your dad ever see you live? Yeah. Yeah. He, he loved, did. he loved the attention. He only ever got mad. There was one time he got mad cause I made it sound like he was a bad Republican. Oh, <laughs> He doesn't care if it's a bad dad, but don't you dare call me a bad Republican. Bad dad, bad <laughs> husband, bad minister. None of that bothered him. Bad teacher, bad Republican. He got so mad. <laughs> Why? What did you say? Oh, I made a joke about how he was against, uh, how it's like, it's hard to find somebody on Medicare who is against. Is against like it's like a special kind of person. It's like a special kind of selfish to have that and be against. You just don't want other people to have it. You're not against healthcare. You're just against other people's healthcare. Like <laughs> yeah. that's a shitty position. <laughs> but he took that position gleefully. And uh, boy, when I said that, he did not. Mm -mm. I was a political science major. Yeah, in the '60s, dipshit. You heard about maybe. that after the show? <laughs> maybe, yeah, right. right. Maybe. <laughs> now that you put a maybe on it, it makes sense. You think some of this stuff because some of this stuff is fucking nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, thank you for being here, dude. This was great. I appreciate this is it. We you. just talked about my dad. Yeah. Oh man, we no, got we some... didn't look at all. Look at your list up there. Your dad died last year. Oh, damn, you're good at this. Complicated relationship. You've been divorced. You quit drinking, went to therapy at the same time. Oh, man, we did all of that. Cover we just talked about my dad. You... <laughs> you're like the guy on the shield that can break anybody. <laughs> damn. Oh, man, that is hilarious. Well, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you covering everything you said you wanted to talk about. I'm and so excited so. to be here. Thank you for thank you for having me, man. My hands are a little clammy, but I still want to shake. Brother, please, will you uh, and give me that back? Yeah, there, there we go. Will you one more time promote whatever you'd like, please? Uh, at Jeff Tate on Instagram, uh, just another clown. I will be on some of those. When does this come out? In a few weeks. They yeah, in a few, a few weeks, weeks, I'll be on. I'll be out with. Uh, Tommy Segura yeah, going and out. Grand Rapids and Columbus and whatever that run is. <laughs> I think good. I think one of them's in Canada. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're in whatever town we're in right before we go to Canada, meet me outside and help me smoke all my weed. And if you're at the one that's in Canada, meet me outside because I don't have any weed anymore. <laughs> 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 thank you again for coming on jeff i appreciate you i'm ryan sickler on all social media ryan we'll talk to you all next week